after 25 years of plumbing and fitting baths, I still haven't worked out a knack of doing it. I'm sure if someone knows, drop a comment below. They want a shower and a bath in here, and I just, I personally said it's gonna overpower the room. Through there, under this floor, and over the service services there. So, pull the board up here. It's lucky, because we've got the two heating pipes underneath. Make sure we mark it up so we know which is the hot and cold. This one. I get this so much. Loads of people say, why would you dip your solder in your flux to flux your fittings up with? And I've got a little tips top tip for you. When you set your pipes out like this, there's loads of different ways of doing it, but you've always got to make sure they're level and 150 distance apart. So what I always do is Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well. Today's intro is going to be pretty quick because I'm conscious that today's video is quite long. And another reason is someone dropped me a comment last week saying I gave too much away in the intro of the video to what the video was about, if that makes sense. So I must have explained everything I was going to do and then the video showed everything that I'd explained. But I'd just like to give a brief outline of, of what's going on. So a brief outline is... We start a new extension for Scott, the builder I do some work for, who owns the barn. Uh, it's just a little extension, two-story extension, a utility area down below, a bathroom above. So I'm getting all the first fix in for that, the waste, the pipe work. Now, it's an interesting one, this one. Let me know in the comments below what you think to the layout. You'll see in the video, I'm not 100% sure on the layout, but it's the customer's decision. So let me know what you think. And also, if you're watching this on Sunday night or Monday or Tuesday, it's the tool fair at the Rico or whatever it's called now in Coventry this Wednesday and Thursday. I will be there with Unilight Trade Legends doing a bit of a, a, a roving podcast thing. Um, Pete usually does it for some reason. He can't do it this year. I think he's got too much on. I was going to the show anyway, so Al asked me if I would like to jump on and sort of do that. So if you're going to the tool fair and you spot us, come and say hello. Anyway, that's enough. Get on with this video. Hope you enjoy it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you later. So we're back today at a job that we came and looked at probably two or three weeks ago where there's a basically a bathroom going above here. I came out and took off a radiator. Uh, just so the lads could get a hole knocked through the wall. I'll take you upstairs shortly and show you, but what we've got here is, there's a bathroom going above here. So this area in here is just gonna be like a, a workshop utility garage sort of thing for the customer to tinker around in. Vice benches, all that sort of stuff along there. We're gonna have a little sink here, a little basin here. We're gonna send that four inch up, drill it through there. Off the back of there is a false wall that we're gonna inset the basin in upstairs and the toilet frame, etc. So today we're gonna to get the waste up there, saw pipe up there, into that studding, get some pipe work in, hot and cold, the shower go in there, bath go in there, and I think a toilet there, and a basin there. So we're just gonna get some pipe work in, get these soil pipes in, and just, sort of get a bit of a start on it really. When we first came to look at it, they weren't sure on the bathroom layout. They're now going for a bath and a shower. I personally think it's gonna be a little bit crammed in there, but the customer wants a bath, a shower, a basin, a toilet. Uh, so we'll see how it works out. Sometimes you can only guide a customer onto what they want, but in this one, I think it's gonna be a little bit too much, but we'll see, I might be completely wrong at the end of it. So, let's get some pipe work in. Let's get this level up. We've basically got a level straight off there up and then we can drill through that joist up in the corner. Someone's started to do it, but yeah. We'll level that through and get our pilot hole through there. So, I've run the level, as you can see. Straight off that fit in. See if I can get out of the way. Straight up and then Scott's above, just drilling that hole out and then we can basically run that soil pipe from there. Come off there with a, a fit in into the basin that's going to go here. So we'll work off that. Managed to find a boss. So what I'm going to do, took the rodding eye off. What we'll do is we'll get this boss put on here and we'll put the rodding eye 
for that sort of under the spill level basically of where the basin is going to be so the rod and I is going to sit about there I say it's going to be a utility in here so that's going to be accessible and what we'll do we'll put that there get a boss in the end come off there with an elbow then we can run and pick the basin sink sort of hand wash for this garage utility that's going to be there and then we can come off there rod and I there and then up when the hole's out straight through and go from up there We've got that rod and iron now, so moving up to here, so we're just where the joist is here, got the hole through there, that's where we're going to take the four inch. We've got a shower going above here, so the waist of the shower is going to be around here, and we've got a bath that side, we're just going to run along here. Now, we could put this, we could put this adapter up here, it just means drilling through this joist for the shower, so what we're going to do, because as I've said, this is just a utility area, it's not going to be a problem. We're going to put we're going to put the adapter in here, so then we can just come in the front with the bath, or in fact in the side with the bath, and then this side on the right, we can just come into this joist and go to where the, wherever the shower waste is going to be coming through the floor. And then it, it's not going to be a problem going up here. It's all going to be exposed anyway, because there's going to be plug sockets and whatnot on the outside. So. We'll get this in, just make up that little bit of pipe from there to there. And we can work from that and then up and begin getting it in upstairs. So what I've done, I've measured from the top of this rod and eye to exactly where that little four-way, that little boss adapter is going to go. And then measured a bit of pipe up through the hole into the bathroom, which we can trim down later on. So that's the bit that's going to go in. Then the four-way boss adapter. Oh. In the boss adapter and that bit is going to go through the floor so we'll glue this up get this glued onto here then we can offer it up in one big piece slide it up put it in and then that's it get some clips on it and we can put the stabs off for the waist and then we can work that when we've got the fittings in above you haven't caught up with that mark huh you haven't caught up with that what glue going off yeah, sometimes you've got to be dead quick, really. Yeah. But there is a little trick that you can do to sort of do it. If you heat it up, you know, with the blow lamp, oh, yeah, yeah, heat okay. it up, sometimes you can move it around a little bit. Yeah, not too much. No, not too much. So, that's that stack now in and before anyone says it people always say pick me up on it or everyone's got a little opinion on it which is fine i can have an opinion on it yes we've got brown there then black then gray then black we're using up some of the bits because the builder's supplying all the bits on this job we're using up what we've got because this is just going to be a utility room it's not a problem it's not an issue chances are scott will box that in anyway so it won't be a problem with a little access panel for the rod and iron there but yeah someone always says mm -hmm. That's not the same colour, I'd have done it. And the reason being, we are on a job that's, you know, out in town to then go off, drive off to go and get, you know, the same colour as that when it's going to be boxed in and it's not an issue. It's just a waste of time, waste of money. We might as well use up the bits that we've got. I mean, the builder's got supplied all these bits anyway, so, you know, he's happy for me to use it. So what we'll do now, as we're down here, we start drilling some holes through for the pipe work. We've got to take hot and cold over to here. Uh, as I said, we've got a toilet there, basin there, shower there, and a bath there, which I think the bath, we're gonna drill up through that little stud there, up into the stud work because we're having a concealed uh, tap in the wall on this one. But yeah, just get, start getting some pipe working. This is upstairs. This is that bathroom that we've just been downstairs doing that sort of stack so what we've got to do is come along here pick a toilet up that's going i think it's there i think that's the center i haven't gone through this completely yet and then there's a basin here which will come through obviously the stud and into it because this is being studded off i think we're coming about 30 mil off the front of here as well and then obviously we're going to take that up and vent it through there so that's where the shower tray is going to go we're having a bath along here with taps sunk in the wall which sort of like I said earlier, it's just gonna, it's gone from my initial plan was to sort of have, or my initial idea, sorry, because the customer sort of has said they want a shower and a bath in here. And I just, I personally said it's gonna overpower the room. I said, 
a bath here with a shower above it, basin and toilet, and it would just make a nice space. But now with a bath crammed in here, shower tray there, basin and toilet, it's, it's quite a lot of quite a lot of stuff going in one room that's going to overpower it, I think. I might be completely wrong when we come to uh, fit it in, but that's just my opinion. So, yeah, we're going to start getting some pipe work in here. So underneath, we'll drill the joists underneath, run the pipes through underneath, and then we can go next door and connect into the hot and coals. Let me show you. So that's the back of that wardrobe unit. We'll bring our pipes into here, then we'll go through the, um, the brickwork here, the same as what the electrician's done here, just take a couple of these bricks out, they're non-supporting, they're not a problem, and then run across. That's coming out obviously, so we can connect onto these hot and coals here, that will then feed that bathroom the other side. So we're gonna go down, drill some holes out, and get some pipe work through there. We'll just poke it through at the minute, so it's into here so they can carry on with that side of the build. Same as the electrician, he's just got his cables in there and then at a later date, you can just connect into the hot and colds here. So, name that film, turn that off. So this is underneath, as I was saying, we'll bring the hot and colds across there, up into that stud work partition that's there, so that's fine. And then we're gonna go through around, we'll probably go in the next door actually, away from the electrician, and we can send it through. But yeah, we'll poke them into there for now. So we've got the two holes drilled for that joist there. Hot and colds are gonna poke into that floor in there so we can work on it that side, but we need to get them through there, under this floor, and over to them services there. So, pull the board up here. It's lucky, because you've got the two heating pipes underneath. So we'll hook the two plastic pipes through there. Yeah, this job, the first fix is gonna be plastic on this. And as always, wherever you see the pipe work will be in copper, but we'll just pull these through here, get them into there. The little hatch there it just means that you can feed it instead of trying to get it through in one because of the way the pipe bends it always catches on something so we can get it to this point here and feed it that way through the two holes and over into the extension So we've got that end poking out here. It's got that end poke out there. I'll get it through these holes here and then always blow through that pipe just in case any crap or whatever's got inside it. But yeah, we'll push that one through, blow through it, make sure we mark it up so we know which is the hot and cold at either end and either end here. And then uh, we're into that floor space in there. So always cut off a little bit more than what you'll need because you can trim it down. So that's the other team. We'll do the same, put some pipe work in for the cold and then we're through into there. So those two pipes now are sticking through there, mark them both, as I say, always mark your pipes. So you've got hot and cold. I've drilled two holes in here, so if you think above here is where the bath is, just here, so the tap is gonna be in the wall. So we'll come off these, drill through this joist, take two feeds up to there, ready for the tap, the inset tap, and then we'll take hot and coals across there. We'll obviously got to drop down because there's a basin going here, but we can bring them through and drop it down in the corner next to that saw pipe. Then we're going to go up for where the shower's going to go. And what I think I'm going to do instead of running in, instead of running the pipes upstairs through that stud work, I'm just going to run them through these joists along here and then just stab up the toilet, give or take around there and the basins give or take around there. So then, once we've got them in, that's pretty much the hot and cold first fix done. And then tomorrow we'll have to look at the heating. Because um, this is such a big house, it is a, it's a proper big house, look. We're gonna have to um, probably, uh, I'm not sure, we might have to freeze the pipes just to get onto them to then be able to move the rad position in there. I'm not sure where it's going to go yet. So we're getting there now. A lot of the first fixed pipe work is in. We've come through here. We've stabbed up there for the bath tap that's going to be sunk in the wall. Come across. We've took it up right in this corner here for the shower that's going to be above because we're going to drop down here now in copper. Got some clips out. 
ready to just clip down the wall here. So we get some copper down there, ready to feed this basin. And then we've took this along. We just need a bit more pipe to come off the hot, but I took the cold across. As you can see, we stabbed up for the toilet. We stabbed up for the basin on the right on the cold. And then obviously we've got the hot on the left, which we're gonna run in and we've got a bit more pipe. But yeah, we're concentrating now, getting these two pipe, copper pipes down into feed this basin here and we can begin to make a list up for tomorrow for the little bits we need. As I say, this is the first day really being on this job, so I just grabbed a load of stuff this morning, what I thought I might need, give me a bit of a start on the job, which it has, but we've got to pick up some waste fittings for upstairs, some soil pipe fittings for upstairs, uh, a couple of bosses, a couple of bosses there for the shower and the, uh, and the bath, and another little bit of pipe. I think we use 25 meters just doing this bit, and then over, to where we're going to make the connection and i've got a few little bits on the van that i've used as well so um we've been able to get that bit in anyway but no we'll get this copper drop down and then we'll go upstairs run the soil pipe across for the toilet and then up for the vent that means they can board and skim that ceiling which i think they want to try and do either later on today or early tomorrow morning yeah we're getting there with this one it's not a big job but it's first fixing it so just got the first length of copper in into here now i've put a little set on it there i've never really been one for measuring bends i've always sort of eyed them up and sort of had a good idea of whereabouts it's going to sit so let's see that one has just eyed up and it's worked perfectly so let's just see if i can fluke it and uh do the next one by eye no pressure i'll film myself film myself doing it so that um i'm bound to balls this one up but, but it was just an air so slight little set on the end. So pop that in. Tiny little set. Be a bit much this one. Told you I jinx myself, anyway. I? So, so let's offer this one into position. Let's just trim that down. Let's take, yeah, that one will fit in behind there. So let's push this one into position and get this one clipped in as well. So there we go, that's worked a treat. So we've got those two in. We'll run around there, elbow them back to the wall, get them flat, poke out two feeds for this basin and then we can sort the waste out. And then that, well for that bit we've got to put in tomorrow and we've got a bit of pipe, is the first fix on this side done. Right, we're back on this extension today. Last night before I went up in the bathroom where I am now, the plasterer wanted to get the ceiling boarded and the trim board around the edge because I think he was planning on skimming the ceiling last night. So what we had to do was quickly get a branch on here and you see this here coming up and that's the vent connect to the roof tile. So we've done that. We literally just got it in last night so we could get this on because as I say, we thought he was going to be skimming the ceiling. So what we're going to do is get some clips on here. Well, to be fair, we're going to use strap banding on this because it's got to be real tight back to the wall because of where the uh, boards are going to sit. So we're going to strap band that. Then we're going to come off here, across outlet for the toilet here, and then we're going to go in the end, there's my branch. So we're going to have a branch here for the toilet. Get it to stay. Branch there for the toilet. Then in the end there, we're going to have a four inch, two inch and a quarter reducer that's going to pick up the waste for the basin there. So we've got to trim this down, get this in, and then we can hopefully get some board on there. We've also got to bring the pipe work out. It's just a bar shower, so 150 centers for the bar shower. Um, and then we can get this boarded. And I think we're about ready then to get the tray in and the bath in, which is going to go there. But we've got to get this done first. So let's crack on with that. 
we've now got the strap band in on that vent pipe just to bolt it back to the wall we can't put full on clips because it's going to lift it too far off the wall and we've got to get the boards on so we've done that we've put some strap band on the bottom we've run that along we've got um, the branch in ready for the toilet and we've come off here with our inch and a quarter and what we're going to do we're going to come up here where are we come up here out for the basin bring the two hot and colds out for the basin as well brought the cold out for the pan and then what we're going to have here is a bar shower so we're going to put some stud in in there just so that we can put the pipe work in get it clipped so it's solid bring them out at 150 centers then they can finish boarding this wall and get this one done then we can get the shower tray in which possibly we might do today i'm not sure if we're gonna have enough time or not because we need to mount the bath so i've just looked at the bath and what i was told was it was a wall filler so pipe work goes into the wall here the spout comes out over the bath fills the bath up i've just checked because it's not long been delivered on site and yes there's a plate in the wall to turn it on and off but it fills from the overflow on the bath. So we're gonna to have to mount that plate and then drop a pipe back down and then out behind, which is gonna be a bit of a pain to connect up. I hate these ones where you have to get behind them. Luckily, the back of here is, I don't know if you can see how they boarded it. The back of there is through here. It's still mess of a room is basically here so we've got I've covered it up we've got the pipes coming up here so we're going to mount that valve there facing obviously that way into the bathroom and then we're going to have to do it but because the back of the bath is going to be there we can always just cut that bit out or make it removable or accessible and in the back of the wardrobe I'm going to say to Scott if you just make that panel just a, a removable panel so if ever there's an issue it's accessible a lot of the time people put these baths in and they want the taps at the back and all that which is fine i've fitted them before but i always do a stipulation saying if ever there's an issue with it you're going to struggle to get to the back of it so always if you can put a little access in the back so that is our main sort of priority today is to get that bathroom if we can because the rest of the week we're on another job we're on that other extension um for my mate down in Warwick so yeah, that little one so yeah we need to sort of crack on with this a little bit now so as I said we've got the first fix in now for the basin and we've just got to bring a little bit of soil pipe out for that pan and then that's fine they can get that boarded we're going to get the shower pipes in now what I always like to do when they're having a bar shower is either go and unpack it because if you've got a fixed riser like we have here it's very sort of crucial you get the head height exactly where you want it for the, to suit the customer. So we've um, sort of agreed that it's going to go about that height. So with the tray in, obviously it'll come up a couple of inches or you know 40 mil or so. But with the height being there, we've marked it up so we know exactly where it's going to go. So we're going to put a couple of little buttons, a couple of little buttons in there, across there, and get the clips on. That's the centre because it's a 900 tray. That's the centre point there. We'll do 150 centres, bring them out, clip them on, and then those two bits of copper sticking out will connect onto the, the back plates for that shower. But yeah, it's always quite crucial to make sure. Some of them you're right with. Some of the risers are adjustable and they can move up and down. This one is a fixed riser. So you've always got to double check the heights that you want them at because once it's in, as we all know, once them pipes are in, if you was to put it there, that would have been way too low so go for that height and all should be good by the time you got the top on two buttons in two clips set exactly 150 apart ready for the centers of the shower so we'll alter this pipe work we'll bring it up obviously hot's on the left so we'll bring a hot out here and probably to be fair just run along the back elbow into there out and then the same with the cold come up and out so we've got the first pipe in, the hot pipe in, we've come off the plastic, across in copper, out. What I always try and do is leave a little bit of a gap at the back there because once this is tiled, you've got a little bit of back and forth movement. I only, sometimes that can just get you out of the shit a little bit if you've got a little bit of play in it. So I always try and leave it, I don't 
clip this right back to the wall because then you've got nothing. As I said, once that front bracket plate is on, it screws into the top anyway to keep it solid. So I always do that. Some people do, some people don't, each their own. So we've got that there. We're going to bring the cold across, elbow up, elbow out, and again, you'll have a little bit of movement because of the upright. So it's a clip there, but you'll have that little bit of flex on that top bit to move in and out slightly. So let's get these soldered on, get this done, get two cap ends on the end, and then that wall's completely ready. Flux up these bit of pipes. Loads of people say to me, I get this so much. Loads of people say, why would you dip your solder in your flux to flux your fittings up with? I've always done it this way. I've never ever used a flux brush. Some people do. Again, everything, people do things differently. Some people solder this way, some people solder that way, some people have a pipe vice to hold it in, others hold it, others flux brush. One of the machines, you can get the machines, can't you, that you flux the end of the pipe up with. But that is how I do it. I've been doing it that way 25, 25 years, 20, yeah, 25 years. Right, we've got that pipe I've just soldered up. I'll offer that into position there. Then we'll just mark it. With a fine pencil, we'll just mark it there, where we're gonna cut it. We've got the pipe working. We've just gotta solder this elbow up here. And I've got a little TIFF's top tip for you. When you're setting your pipes out like this, there's loads of different ways of doing it. But you've always gotta make sure they're level and 150 distance apart. So what I always do, is I get my little boat level, I mark here, see that little black line there, and I mark that side, and then when you pop your little boat level on, A, you've got your marks for your 150, and B, you're perfectly level. So yeah, just mark your little boat level up, 150 centres, and you'll never go far wrong. So, let's get this soldered up. There we go, all soldered up, all done, pop two caps on the end there, and we can get this complete wall boarded and skimmed. So with all that done, we move on to the bath. We've got to fit some legs onto this. Now, I've come across these baths before. I can't remember, is it Caron bath? Can't 100% remember what they're called, I'm sure it is, but they are really good, solid baths. This one's been stored outside a little bit, but. But yeah, they are properly solid and really well insulated. It's not just a case of the flimsy plastic on the side with just the batten on the bottom. This one is fully insulated all around here as well. Luckily, we haven't got to drill through this because as I've said, the taps are going on the wall and it's filling via the filler, which I assumed, should never assume anything. I assumed it was going to be on the back wall, but it turns out it's going to be down this end, so it's not going to be too bad to get to at all. So I originally said about cutting an access panel behind the bath, but all we'll do, we'll, leave, we'll link from the lever, which we'll put in, and obviously bring a pipe around there to connect on there. So let's get some legs onto here. We've got the legs in the box here. So we'll get the legs strapped on, get it into position, get, get the legs spanned underneath, get some battens around the outside, and get it laid into position. So, as you may have seen on some more other videos, whenever I'm doing something like a bath or something that's got loads of little bits with it, I always lay everything out like this. Instead of just keeping them in the bag that I've thrown away somewhere, I always like to lay it out so you know exactly what you've got, how many of each. It just makes stuff a whole lot easier. So, these are these legs. They're pretty solid and they're pretty good as opposed to some legs that are just dead flimsy. You know, you know the ones that go on like a crate around the bath. They're all right, but they're just never properly solid. So basically, these sit just, I always put this one, the bottom end one, 
quite far down. There's no sort of specific spacing to put it, but I like to put it just about there. So that one will sit there, and then the other one will probably go roughly about there. Now, funny enough, this one hasn't got a middle leg, hasn't come with it, it's just the two legs. So we'll put that one there and that one there. And what I may do is just get something made up just to support the middle of the bath. They haven't supplied one, so I'm guessing it's all right, but for my own peace of mind, I'll just get something put in there. So we get these plates screwed on, get these legs made up, get the feet sat on it. Um, and again, these come with the sort of span bits. They'll sit like that. But what I will do is put um, a, a bit of like a floorboard or timber or whatever across there just to span the weight of it. Because I just don't like just that one, them four single points with all the pressure pushing down on that. I like to span it. So we get them bolted on get the legs on and go from there. And I almost forgot the most important bit, the screws to put these plates on. Always use the ones that come in the pack. You know, they're usually the dead short one, they're usually the smallest ones because you don't want to be putting a screw that's that little bit longer through there and it coming out in there under the bath. So yeah, always use the small ones that get supplied to put the legs on. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app on your smart speaker and on 88 to 99. As you can see, that's the legs on. Just roughly put them in to a sort of a, a fairly even height. What we'll do now, we'll lay the bath down, offer it into position, sort of get some heights set up on it. I'm not sure if the bath panel's here because I'm not sure if this one's having a panel or a custom tiled front on it or what, I'm not 100% sure. So I'll double check before we set this for its final height. Right, we've got the bath roughly into position now. It isn't having a panel on it, we're having a custom made panel on the front. I know before anyone says it, I'm not a massive fan either of tiling the front of baths because if ever there's an issue, you have to smash it all off. The good thing with this is, as I've said behind, I think we are going to put some sort of an access in the back. Well, it, it needs it, to be honest. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the height of this from the floor. We're going to set it to 560 because we're going to have, take 20 mil off that. It's going to be about 540 by the time the tiles go on the floor and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to get it in. I've put some plinths on the floor, as I said. What we'll do, we'll level it all round now, alter the feet to get it completely level. Uh, work from this side. So we'll, I've leveled this side through here. Have I? No, I haven't yet. I can't remember what I've done. I'm going to work from this point here. So we'll level across, level down, level the back, and level there. Sometimes you end up chasing round for ages and ages. Even after 25 years of plumbing and fitting baths, I still haven't worked out a knack of doing it. I'm sure if someone knows, drop a comment below. But yeah, we're going to get this completely level round now and uh, then we can get the baton on the back, fix it into position, get the waist sorted. Right, there we go. After a lot of chasing my tail, I've got that completely level all round. Right, that's going on this level anyway, it's not mine. Perfect. So, we're completely level on this bath. What I'll do now is get a mark underneath the bath, all the way down there, and then all the way down there as well and run a plinth to take the weight of the bath all the way around. I've always done it like that, I've always put a plinth on it because it comes with these plates that you can sort of clip in but for me personally I'm not a big fan of that, I'd rather run some timber around the back and you know the whole bath then is supported all the way around. So we'll do that, we'll get the caps underneath because they're all the same equal size and probably about a mil thick at the point where the feet touch it to there. We'll pop them underneath and then that is completely fixed down. So we've got the batten into position around the back of the bath now. So before we put the bath in, it's a bath filler. So the water feed is going to go from the tap that's going to be 
somewhere there on the wall. So hot and cold into there, then from there, it'll come down behind the bath to this point here, and then we'll connect on. There is a feed in this bag. Let's connect on there, the water there, so that when they turn the tap on, it fills the bath through that bath filler there. They're just a bit awkward to, uh, to get in before the bath goes in. So we just connect that under the back there now, bolt it onto the front, get the bath into position, seal the bath in, and then it's just a case of connecting the actual handle in the wall there and running a pipe round to come out here to get on under there. Right, we're back on this extension. The plaster came out last night and done in here. I thought he was gonna do this ceiling, hence the rush for that, but never mind, it is what it is. Uh, right, what did we do yesterday? We got the bath in, we got it all sealed up, siliconed up, sat on the buttons and all that. So that is absolutely solid now. Um, what we've got today, um, so this is gonna be the lever to turn the bath on because it's obviously gonna fill through the filler as I've said. So we put that in, the customer wanted it down this end of the bath so it's easier to turn on and off. So we've got to connect it the other side, then come out the bottom with the pipe because obviously hot and cold are gonna go into it little mix of out and then out of there down along here to connect on to that which obviously goes to the filler but what we've had to do we're sort of working from behind instead of in front on this valve so should take you in so we've altered the parts we brought them across because they're just going to go up into this valve now We've sort of set this valve here, but what we're going to have to do is, I'll only put it in loose. What we're going to have to do, make that up, drop some pipes down off it, do the top one, loop it round and across, and then push it in like so, and then screw it to the stud from behind. You usually do it from like bathroom side, but it is what it is on that. That's the way we've got to do that one. So we'll whip that out, make three male on to coppers into that and then we can come back in connect it up connect the pipe work to it secure it up and then that will be ready for them to seal up when the tiler comes obviously seal it all up on that moisture board and um, begin to get it tiled because that boarding is going to go on as soon as I think I think I thought it was going to end yesterday but anyway right let's get some male on to coppers into this and get it set so we're going to use the loctite 55 on these i think it was the big house we done last summer where i did like a comparison test of uh i haven't got any of ptfe tape to loctite 55 i'd never used this before um someone said give it a try I gave it a try and to be honest i've only ever used it since now people are now saying about the loctite what's the the um liquid stuff you put on now that sort of baffles me you put liquid on that thread and then just make it in. I don't know if it's it's not gonna feel resistant as you turn it in. So I'm gonna have to get some, give it a try. But for this one, for all threads now, all sort of compression threaded fittings, I always use Loctite 55. Find it really good. Good, I do keep a bit of PTFE tape just in case. But yeah, as a rule, that's my go-to product now on threads. I've just put two little bends on the end of these pipes because they will sit either side and get it in one-handed like so and like so and that's bolted into position so we'll have them looking down that'll be through there they'll be poking down the other side of that wall and then all we've got to do is just come off the top bend around the side and drop down and that'll be the one that pokes out under the bath here and just runs along over there to the uh, feed for the filler so there you go, straightforward as that. We've got the valve on the back of there. Obviously, hot and colds are that way because in the bathroom, hot's going to be on the left. So you've always got to remember to mark it up, especially when you're doing it counterintuitively because you see it looking from that side, if that sort of makes sense. So got the valve in, off the top, across, down, poke through. So that's sort of like waste end of the bath. We can connect that up to the filler now. Then your hot and cold's coming in. I've done it in plastic because, as I said, the first fix on this job specify plastic, so we put it in, and then the tails I always do in the copper. And as I've said a million times, whenever you see 
pipe work on one of my jobs, it'll be in copper anyway. So yeah, so that's in. So we'll put a li little bit of the insulation back in and then that is ready for them to board. And as I say, I think, or I've advised that they leave at least this area accessible. Um, but I think what Scott might do is just make all of this bottom half removable. So that's it, we're just about done in here. We've connected the cold or the feed from that shower valve. That's now set in the wall, piped up from behind, comes off, connects under the bath, we've got the waste in, bath's all insecure. So we just went for the lads to moisture board this wall, then we can get the train and it can be completely sealed before they start tidying. But yeah, everything else is all in, ready. This can be completely done now. So what we'll do, I'll go downstairs now and just finish off a couple of little bits, connecting the waste into the stack here. Got a couple of little pipes to put in, coppers down for the downstairs basin. So we'll go and do that and then we're just about finished off at what point we can be here on this job because I'm conscious I've got to get to another extension tomorrow. So, as I said, we've just got a few things to finish off down here. That's the waste coming from the bath. So as I've said, this ceiling is going to be boarded but they're not bothered about seeing pipes showing. That may get boxed in, I'm not too sure yet. Because like I said before, this is just like a utility area. So we'll run the bath waste just below ceiling level into that boss there. Other boss to the other side is gonna be for the shower that's gonna sit roughly around there. We need to connect that hot to the basin feed there. And we've got two hot and coals dropping down in this corner, which we're just gonna stab them across here and uh, put caps on because I'm not sure exactly where they're gonna come out yet. So we'll just get these last little bits tidied up and we should be away from here. That's the bath waste connected in now into that stack. I've just stabbed out for the shower there so we can get on that when the shower tray's in. Uh, just got these two little pipes to finish off here for the basin or sink or whatever it is that's going here. I'm just going to leave them poking out with two caps on because we're not 100% sure where it's going to go in relation to this wall or what. Uh, chances are I have some strange feeling it's going to be shifted onto there. But I just wanted to say, always carry some street 15mm elbows and 22mm elbows in the van because they get you out of some little sticky situation. You know when that's just not far enough apart to put two elbows on and not close enough to just go straight in. So keep a little uh, few street elbows in there. And I've got glue all over my hands. You know when you've been soldering well and you get fucking glue everywhere. So we get that soldered up then we've just got to do that last pipe across there for the basin. Right, so we've just had a mad dash to get this shower tray in and I went to get the GoPro to film it and the battery was flat. Sod's law. But the tray is now in, so what we did, we basically just bedded it down on BT1 uh, bathroom, sealant and adhesive. I always bed my trays down on something like that, that or Durafix or something like that because I just find it easier. People are going, yeah, you've got to use sand and cement or tile adhesive. Then now companies are now beginning to recognize that stuff like BT1 or CT1 can be used to bed trays down with. So that's what that's been bedded down with. We've just got to go downstairs now, connect the waste on it, and um, that is ready then to be tanked, sealed in, and ready for tiling. But do you see what I mean? I think I said at the start of the video how close that's gonna be. It looks like it overhangs it, but there's literally about a 10 mil gap from where the shower is to where the bath is. It wasn't my choice, I said, don't have the shower tray, just have a bath there with a shower over it. But customers are always right, as we know. So that's the tray in. But yeah, that sort of sums up where we're at with this bathroom now. All we've got to do at some point is get back to, got these towel rail, uh, we've got these rad pipes under here. The rad is going under that window. But to do that, we've got to either drain the system or freeze it or something like that. So that's going to be a nightmare because this house is massive. But yeah. That's for the bathroom, and that's just about done, ready now to be tiled, so hope you've enjoyed it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that jazz, and I'll catch you soon.